crazy. Speaking of crazy, let's get into some H-bomb. I know a lot of people chatter like, who the fuck is H-bomber guy? Well, if you were a, a bread tuber enthusiast, if you were a lefty leaning sort of person, you probably saw them. Part of the whole crowd, you've got people like uh, ContraPoints and Vosh, Lindsay Ellis, uh, Hassan Piker, I suppose you could consider part of it too. Kind of the left leaning uh, politically, but they still talk about video games and you know anime and other shit. And then you know put out long essay videos that are somewhere between one to eighteen hours long. And he's one of them. And he put a video out recently talking about the hard hitting plagiarism that's going on on YouTube. You can see it's a very popular video. It did incredibly well for him. Three, four hours long, half a million likes. 17 million views, quite a bit of views, a lot of views, raking them in. So he puts this video out talking about plagiarism. He had a few people he talked about. One of them was the uh, internet historian. Because we all know the most serious thing you can do on YouTube is plagiarize. Everybody is fucking original over here. OC Donut Steel. Really, really taught the internet historian a lesson, didn't he? But uh, uh, other people were mentioned in the video, and other people were brought up in conversation related to the video. One of them was somebody by the name of uh, James Summerton. Now, James decided to start deleting everything, and then he posted something up in relation to this video being put out. Let's read it. If this message is live, it means I scheduled it before ending things. I have videos scheduled to go out over the next couple of days. Nothing new. I just wanted Nick's portfolio of work to be available. I've left directions that any money from those videos be donated to the Canadian... What is with Canadians? Actually, what the fuck? All right. Uh, a video is being donated to the Canadian Association for Suicide Prevention. They've tried very hard to pull me back, but there's simply no life for me anymore. I don't know if we should donate to them if they've already failed at their fucking job, James. I'm just kind of throwing... I mean, I know you're dead now, but do we really want to keep throwing good money after bad? I mean, if they were good at their job, you wouldn't be writing this load, would you? They've tried very hard to pull me back, but there's simply no life for me anymore. I've lost everything. My only friend, my livelihood, my name, and it's all my own fault. The world will be a little bit better off now. Goodbye. Oh, shit. It would appear... It would appear that James Summerton has killed himself as a direct cause of H. Bomber Guy's expose on his thievery, his plagiarism. But it goes deeper. No, it just goes deeper than that. There I go. This infographic, true and honest, has been circulating around the internet, sharing dark, dark fucking secrets. Let me read it to you. Above is a video by H Bomber Guy released. Its publication date is December 2nd, 2023. Below is a Kiwi Farms thread. Its first post, the OP, was published February 21st, 2017. Both are about James Summerton. If you look, you can see. The Kiwi Farm thread clearly says James Summerton are plans to get this guy to kill himself by saying he plagiarizes other people. And that's that's that date, February 21st, 2017. Years, years before H-Bomber Guy. Holy shit. H-Bomber Guy stole the entire idea for the co uh, content of the thread just so he could claim the kill for himself. It's rumored that James even went so far as to carve Harry's name onto his stomach so when they discovered his body, H-Bomb could claim the kill for his tally. Stealing others' work is never okay. It takes a lot of time and effort to drive a man to kill himself, and Harry just taking the work of others is fucking disgusting. How about you cite your sources, Harry? How about that? Well, well, well. It would appear that our boy, H-Bomber guy, is a fucking plagiarist. Swooped in there and stole Kiwi Farm's kill. As you know, Kiwi Farms is the internet kill factory responsible for the murders and suicides of hundreds of people. And they've been looking at James for a long time. Here comes H-Bomber Guy, makes his fucking video, and steals that kill. I mean, you got to understand something about Harry. I know a little bit about him since we were on the same forum together. Uh, he's a fucking psychopath. Did you know there are folk songs about him? And his never-ending killing sprees? Bet you didn't know that. But it's true. In fact, I've got one here for you. Uh, this is adult content. If there are children watching, they may want to avert their gaze. It's quite a harsh song talking about his lust for blood. But we're going to talk about the real Harry, the real H-Bomber guy, 
the real bread tuber out there slaughtering the innocent. It's just one of the songs. He scared so many communities, they've literally written songs about him. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god, he's out there just slaughtering people left and right. Uh, it's James James Summerton. <laughs> oh, okay. But I thought I'd talk a little bit about the history of Medica and go into a little bit about it. So there was this forum. Overall, pretty good. Four out of five stars. Started by Goons. Goons, for those that don't know, are something awful members. That's what they used to refer to themselves as. In fact, if you've heard the term troon on the internet, that's actually from something awful. It's referring to a transsexual goon or a troon. So, a bunch of goons, really big into Retsu Prey. If you remember Retsu Prey from back in the day, that was very popular. A lot of videos about it. God, this all goes back to old YouTube, doesn't it? Anyway, they loved Retsu Prey. And so they tried their hand at it. I wish I could find the video. There's probably a copy out there somewhere, but a couple of the founding members, who Haberman is a part of, as well as uh, some others, tried their hand at Red Supre, and it was a fucking awful video. They just got their shit pushed in. They were very, very upset about this. <laughs> so they decided, being e-humorous, which is a serious term they used, they were going to start their own forum, because fuck something awful. So Haberman decided to start Medicare Forums which is a mispronunciation of the word mediocre by some foreigner who didn't like him. So Medica Forums starts. A bunch of goons show up. And uh, among them is our boy, the Lord of Ops, if you all remember, Haberman, destroyer of souls, a breaker of worlds. And of course, H-Bomb. H-Bomb was a friend of his. Jordan and a few others as well. They'll start up the forums. They're all having a great time. They start very... Uh, you know, very, very slowly. They start very slowly. But as time goes on, things get more and more serious. Feelings get hurt. Lawsuits get filed. And there's a little bit of, there's a little bit of regret going on there. A little bit of regret. So I thought I would read you what I'd like to call um, Soliloquy of Trolls Remorse by Haberman. Because a very strange thing started to happen on the Medicare forums. All these people that like to use to laugh at retards, and we're going to talk about some of the retards they laughed at, like to have fun, like to troll, like to do uh, naughty things. 
they all got trolls remorse and trolls remorse is basically when you when you're a real asshole to somebody online or a group of people or a bunch of different people and suddenly you start to feel bad about it one day and decide that the only solution is to become the other extreme of the spectrum not to just you know adjust yourself and be normal have a little bit of you know normalcy to your life but just become the most cookie cutter in this case lip shit let's just say uh personality you could become so haberman gets very upset after years of running the forum with his fellow goons h-bomb and everybody else and decides that he's going to put up uh uh, a long, long essay about how terrible he was and how sad he feels about this and its trolls remorse. And this is something that affected him. It affected Jordan, who went on to found another website called Busy Street, which was its own shit show. And of course, it affected H. Bomber Guy, who, after the closure of the forums, suddenly got into being a bread tuber and a lefty. Well, he was always kind of a lefty, to be honest, but got into bread tubing, let's say. So let's take a look at Habe's regret. I've got this queued up here. I hope you're ready. This is what he, you need to understand too, this is, I've talked about this before, but it still is remarkable to me. Haberman was probably one of the only people on the internet that was actually able to scrub almost everything related to this forum off of it. There have always been archives of shit people do online. You know how they say when it's on the internet, it's on the internet forever? Untrue. Untrue. I've seen one guy, and one guy only, Haberman, be able to actually erase the entire fucking thing. I don't know how he did it, but he did. You can go to the Wayback Machine, nothing's there. You can go to archive.is and all the variations of it, nothing's there. Just this, just this final letter and a few screen caps and maybe one or two YouTube videos of somebody scrolling the forum right before it closed, and that that's it. He completely fucking erased it. He was so riddled with troll's remorse, so fucked up over it, that he completely made it disappear. You might be wondering, what did he do that was so terrible? that he would want to erase every vestige of it from the internet. Well, we'll get into that. <laughs> we'll get into the shenanigans of these boys. But let's take a look at uh, Habiberman. This will be fun to read. This is a former member of Medicare. I can give you some insights into it. This is uh, from Haberman himself. Prepare. Ooh. Medicare began in late 20, or 2008 and fell apart in early 2012. Over the course of three years, we managed to do a lot of damage often to innocent and undeserving people. While we took pride at the time for putting positive spins on our operations, claiming the people we were attacking had it coming, or that they had learned a valuable lesson, it can be safely said now that our actions at the time were indefensible, plain and simple. Founded by me, Haberman, and the elusive Catalyst, the original goal of the organization was to get away from the juvenile trolling under the banner of activism, claiming that our actions would somehow act as a catalyst for some sort of unspecified positive change. As new members were recruited, and with catalysts quietly leaving at this point, our methods of trolling began to closer resemble targeted harassment, with the primary goal of the site being a forum dedicated to gathering and distributing the personal information of our unfortunate targets. With a YouTube channel dedicated to commentaries over other users, a means of gauging how susceptible a potential target might be to our harassment, a page on our website dedicated to mocking submissions to DeviantArt, another means of seeing how potential targets would react to being provoked, and a growing directory of our target's personal information, we were systematic in our approach to harassment. Furthermore, we were able to manipulate other services such as Encyclopedia Dramatica and to serving our efforts, using inside connections to guarantee ourselves favorable front page coverage. So let's take a little break here and just digest that. First off, no. Uh, they, they weren't founded with the principle of operations in mind. They were founded because they got laughed at because the Retsupray was shit. And they wanted to do Retsupray over other videos. That was the whole gimmick. Films for the Fusilarians and all the other things that were done on Medicare were basically Retsupray of any video that wasn't video games. That's the start of it. <laughs> I love, you know, 24-hour ops and gay ops come from Haberman. See, he used to have this thing where he would be on the forum and somebody would post something funny about some spaz that they found. So imagine uh, a Kiwi Farms or something awful or a 4chan or whatever. And you're reading a thread and you laugh. You have a little guffaw, something funny that you come across. And Haberman would come in and be like, I want them destroyed. You have 24 hours. And that's where 24-hour operations or 24-hour ops came from. Or as we like to refer to it, gay ops. We like to refer to what he did as gay oping. 
Now, to give you an idea, he also talked about how they had an inside man at uh, Encyclopedia Dramatica. That was LMTE. It was a mod over there. Sysop. Some shit. I don't know. Uh, to give you an idea, some of the shenanigans the boys got up to, let me tell you the story of Wolfie661, I think it is. So imagine this. You're a little Jimmy, Jimmy boy. A little Jimmy boy. Let me get a little, little pudding up here. There we go. Hey, you're a little Jimmy boy. Look at him. That's a little Jimmy boy. I should have put a hat on him. Fuck. So you're a little Jimmy boy. You come on the medical forums one day. You all smiles. Hey, everybody. How's everybody doing? Yeah, we're going to laugh at some retards today. And then you see a thread that says Wolfie661. You're like, I wonder what that is. You're all innocent, eating some bubble gum or something. I don't know. Got a lollipop. You're a good boy. So you open up the thread. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> you open up the thread and you see probably the cruelest thing you've ever seen in your life, which, you know, honestly made you laugh quite hard, but it was horrible. So the story of Wolfie, everybody knows what social engineering is. I know everybody talks about hacking and all this shit, but, you know, social engineering of getting information and passwords and private information from just manipulating a target. So Wolfie was uh, a bit of a, he was a little slow in the mind. He had a YouTube channel with a very small audience. Uh, I'd never heard of him before I saw the thread. So LMT, who was the SysOp member, um, he was the guy from Ed that was also a member of, uh, of Medicare decided he wanted to fuck with the guy for some reason and came up with the most convoluted thing I've ever seen with probably the cruelest ending I've ever seen. Uh, so through months and months of social engineering and manipulation, pretending he's like 19 different accounts, he made like 19 accounts. One was a friend of Wolfie. One was an enemy of Wolfie. One was a friend of the friend and an enemy of the other guy. And he had this whole, uh, all these characters that were interacting with each other daily. And Wolfie became aware of them all. Suddenly he's getting all this attention from 19 people, but they're all, they're all him. They're all LMT. He's just fucking with his head. So finally he's like, Wolfie, as one of the friend accounts. He's like, Wolfie, they've got super hackers. They've got some fucking super hackers working for him, Wolfie. I need your passwords. I need your password so I can protect you because I'm your friend. And Wolfie, because he is retarded, does give him the passwords. So LMT gets into all these accounts. Then he comes back and he says, Wolfie, Wolfie, the hackers, they found out. Wolfie, the hackers have hacked me and they now have your passwords. But it's okay because I worked a deal out with them. They just want one thing from you. And if you give it to them, they'll give you back your passwords and your accounts. And Wolfie said, sure. What, what do they need? They need you to film yourself naked, fucking your ass with a coat hanger. <laughs> They need you to do this, Wolfie. And if you do this, Wolfie, they will give you back your accounts. So Wolfie took some time to think about this, but he's slow in the mind, of course. Again, remember, and this he's been fucking with him for months. He used the other accounts, and he convinced them to do it. So Wolfie went on live stream and filmed himself for about five minutes fucking his ass with a coat hanger, which is as bad as you th what you're imagining right in your mind when you, when you hear this story. When you hear like there's a guy fucking his ass with a coat hanger, <laughs> it's as bad as you think. And so he comes back and he says, here's the video. Can I, can you give it to them? And can they give me my passwords and my accounts back? And LMTE says, yes. Thank you, Wolfie. I'll get you your accounts back. And then Wolfie a day later is like, have you got my accounts back? He's like, almost Wolfie, almost. Just, just hold on. So then LMT. <laughs> puts the video up on streaming services for, like, porn sites, right? Buries them on porn sites. And then he uses every contact Wolfie has ever used on every social media and all his emails to family and friends, especially to family. I think he wrote one to his dad especially. And it said, hey, dad, look at me now. <laughs> and it linked him to the video of him fucking his ass with a coat hanger. And then he messaged Wolfie and he said, Okay, you can have your accounts back. <laughs> Tragic. Now, I bring that story up because there were mean things that happened. You'd come across that on the forum. And that, by the way, was the environment that our boy, H-Bomber guy, was a part of. He saw the same threads. He'd read the same shit I would, talk to the same people I did, on the same Skype groups and IRCs that I was in. Fully aware of it. Fully aware of it. So aside from LMT doing things like this to poor 
Innocent Wolfie. I could take Innocent Boy Jim off because Jim. <laughs> Jesus. I got it. It was a hell of a morning. I mean, you don't really walk into a thread like that. Like it, it was months of work. It was months of work. I don't. I don't even know how. I don't know how he found the guy. Like I don't even know why he chose him, but he just did. It's like, yeah, this guy. This guy will do. I'm gonna make this guy fuck himself with a coat hanger. <laughs> Holy fuck! Uh, there's probably on Pornhub somewhere a video buried under some kind of tag or name of Wolfie that's still out there. The last I remember uh, ever being posted in that thread were a bunch of like, um, what are they called? The people that are like horny for fat people. Those people like really like the video. Like he found it. He found a new audience and them. they, they were like, send us. So I, I, I believe what LMTE did was he took all the comments of people saying, Hey, you look pretty sexy fat boy. And just would forward them <laughs> to Wolfie and his family. It was just cruelty upon cruelty. But that wasn't done by the Lord of Ops. Let me just, again, reiterate. I know. He did much darker things. Anyway, let's let's get back to our... I just wanted to give you a little idea of some of the, the mean things that were going on there. Okay. At the same time, we managed to... Oh, let me make sure that's clear. Okay. At the same time, we managed to maintain a legitimate front by enlisting less insidious individuals to create content for us, which allowed us to continue to pass ourselves off as activist and <laughs> e-humorous. Of course, the true intent of the core members of the organization was far darker. Again, who would the core members of the organization be? Uh, let me think here now. Who would it be? It'd be Haberman. And, uh, oh yeah, Haberman's friend, his good goon buddy, would be what I would consider a core member. As opportunities for larger exposure presented themselves, we took full advantage, continuing to contribute to and manipulate ED would eventually win a sysop status on the service. Our sites and channels began to establish their own fan bases, many of whom were blissfully unaware of our true purposes. We established secret connections with established internet personalities who enlisted our help in sabotaging their competition. We brought ourselves near national attention when news media began to cover a game under development by the title of School Shooter North American Tour, which thankfully was never actually distributed. <laughs> now let me give you a little history on this, too. Um, so I was the idea guy behind this. So one day when we were talking, uh, just shooting the shit, uh, I, and I can't even remember, there was some story that was out about a school shooting. And I, I vaguely remember talking to Haberman and a few of the others. I think uh, uh, Nervatel was there and Pocky and a few others. And saying that, you know, wouldn't it be funny if we made a video game that was directly about shooting up a school? <laughs> And, like, we'd have difficulty modes based on the weapons loadout that all previous school shooters had. And so, like, the, the, the Dark Souls version of this, what was that little Asian girl? There's, like, an eight-year-old Asian elementary school girl who, like, used a box cutter in her school. So that, that would be, like, the hardcore difficulty setting because you're against SWAT and all you've got is a box cutter. But the thing is, none of us can program. None of us know how to do any of that, except for, like, one guy. And so that one guy is the guy that ended up having to do the mod that was going to be this game. And so as the game was in development, as this mod is being created, journalists started writing about it and how horrible it was. It even got listed as, I don't know how this happened, but there's a Supreme Court case where one of the Supreme Court justices references this video game in, uh, in their opinion, where they, they talk about it very briefly. <laughs> Our shit post of a video game made it to the Supreme Court. And it had to do with video games and creative freedom and all this other. It's very weird. But Haberman's grand plan for this was, and he talked to Fox News like three times. He was going to get on Fox News as the creator of School Shooter North American Tour 2012 and get on with Jack Thompson. And then when Jack started going in about how video games are violent and terrible, Haberman, instead of disagreeing, was going to fuck with Fox and with Jack and say he absolutely agreed. In fact, he made the game specifically to show how evil video games were and that video game uh, players needed to be curtailed. And he was just going to agree nonstop and talk about how terrible games were and how glad he was Fox News <laughs> and Jack Thompson were there to save the day. That was his master troll op. He took a fun little mod, and that's what he was going to do with it. But of course, yeah, we, we have to continue with Haberman as he gets into the darker forms of things. We played a dangerous game with many of our operations, narrowly avoiding any sort of serious consequences 
for various serious charges. We blackmailed police officers, impersonated religious officials, intimidated the families of victims, and pushed unstable individuals to the point where they suffered complete breakdowns. It is difficult to ascertain if we were directly responsible for any loss of life, but the unfortunate reality is that we may very well have likely been so. It almost seems petty to say this, but the thought of this will haunt me until the day I die. Now, I bring this up because it's interesting. I, I know I'm shitposting a bit about an H-bomber guy here. But he went after Somerton. He went after other people for plagiarism. Now you got Somerton writing suicide notes. And here Haberman is talking about how he established this forum that did all these dark things. And one of the things that Haberman himself is admitting that they love to do was to push unstable people to the point of complete breakdowns and potentially driving them to suicide. Uh-oh. Harry, have you cited your sources yet? Huh? Stealing kills from Kiwi Farms? I guess the blood loss never ends. Subpoenas, takedown requests, letters of legal intent, and pleas from friends and families to our victims were all laughed off. We took nothing and no one seriously and rarely faced any immediate consequences for our actions. One of the few measurable blows to Medicare over the course of our run was when we were removed from our seats of power on ED, but not before removing some of the primary benefactors, resulting in the eventual closure of the service itself. <laughs> Uh, though this was seen as a minor setback to us at the time, in hindsight, it was probably one of our few positive contributions as an organization. Behind the scenes, egos from uh, among the core organization clashed with one another, causing many to leave and pursue other projects. There was a palpable sense of paranoia as those who remained not only feared the traitors, but the others remember or, uh, other remaining members of the organization as well. There was no trust between any members of Medicare, and none of us could truly call each other friends. Anyone who made a mistake of revealing any detail of uh, private information was consequently mocked and shamed for it, which I can personally <laughs> attest to let up to a lot of pent up stuff. Okay, let me explain this one too, as we're going over the history. So here's what happened. LMTE, uh, okay, this is a bit of a long backstory, but Encyclopedia Dramatica for a long time existed as a place where you could post pretty much anything you wanted to. All right. And at the time, uh, was a girl, Vinyl, whoever the fuck she was, uh, started taking donations to the website. And there was a group of people that were really just spurgy that gave a lot of money. And because they gave a lot of money, nobody could make fun of them. Uh, they were called the ED Singers. They made cringy videos. They said cringy shit. But they donated lots of money. So they were protected. And this drove Haberman fucking crazy. He wrote an entire article called Troll Shielding about this very thing. And uh, he and LMTE uh, hated the ED singers. In fact, the Internet Aristocrat uh, YouTube channel was originally created just to make a video making fun of them. That's the entire purpose of that channel, was just to shit on them. Uh, eventually, what ends up happening is LMTE, I believe, got stripped of his sysop um, status. And uh, Haberman got booted from being able to do edits and anything like that. And they got really mad. So Haberman worked very hard to try to get the docs at the ED Singers, and he succeeded. He got their information. And shenanigans began to happen. In fact, somewhere, I, I believe I talked about this in a previous stream or a video, he talks about how his friend from England, England, uh, wink, wink, uh, helped harass the shit out of the ED Singers. Well, the ED Singers, somehow, through the use of a private investigator or somebody else, found Haberman's uh, personal information. And they filed actual lawsuits against him in the state of New York and elsewhere, like civil suits. And it freaked him the fuck out because he was anonymous. I mean, he sure he had his face out there. He was called Haberman, but nobody really knew where he was or who, you know, what his name was or any of that shit. So Haberman is now getting sued by fat girls that don't like him from Encyclopedia Dramatica. And uh, he, he flips out and he's like, we can't go after the ED singers anymore. We can't fuck with Encyclopedia Dramatica anymore. We can't do any of this. And then he foolishly, foolishly tells all of us, by the way, I'm going on vacation for a week. Um, LMTE is in charge of the forum. <laughs> so when he's talking about how everybody was paranoid and they couldn't trust each other and, you know, traitors were stabbing each other in the back, what he's really talking about is we took all the legal information from the lawsuits, like his full name and address and phone number, and we made it a scrolling banner for an entire week on the website while he was gone and didn't have control of the website. So all the victims he talks about, uh, all the people he would fuck with and make fun of, suddenly show up to the website's front page, and there it is. 
Haberman's real name and his address and his phone number with a message that said, uh, fucking call me, I dare you, or uh, come visit me, coward, you know, shit like that. Um, he was not really happy about that uh, chat. He was actually quite fucking angry in regards to that little prank. I believe LFT even tried to do like this replacement function where any letter you would type would just print out personal information. So like if you try to type out hello, H, E, L, and O would all like put out like his name, his number, his fucking address, but it like broke the website. So he stopped doing that. Uh, so Haberman shows back up after his vacation and fuck was he mad. Oh boy, was he mad. Remember, you know, again, little innocent Jimmy boy, okay, lollipops and gumdrops and shit, gets the blame because I'm the idea guy. LFT was like, oh, it wasn't me. It was fucking... Jim thought that would be funny. I did. I did think that was funny, by the way. I wish I could claim uh, it was because I had matured enough at that point and wanted to move on, but it had more to do with the simple fact that the times had changed. Social media was quickly evolving. People were becoming less concerned about their personal information uh, being made private, and our old tactics were having less impact on a new generation of netizens. Rather than growing to recognize the error of our ways, by that point in time, we'd simply grown tired. And so Medicare died, died not with a bang, or even so much as a whimper, but instead quietly overnight without warning or notice. And I say good riddance to Medicare and all it stood for. Selfishly, I attributed to the fact that I was forced to hide my own sexuality and harass my fellow LGBT peers, prolonging an addiction to pain prescription medication, stunting my emotional growth, and suppressing my sense of empathy as well as generally enabling behaviors which I can now recognize as despicable. My association with the site cost me friendships, opportunity, and precious time I never can reclaim. You know, I'd like to say, too, um, none of us knew if Haberman was gay or not. Nobody cared. Nobody would have given a shit. Uh, but I, I guess he felt that this was the deep secret he needed. Maybe we'd make too many gay jokes. God knows we made jokes about fucking everything in relation to one another. Uh, but the prescription addiction and alcoholism, yeah, yeah, he had a few instances there where he went a little too hard on the pills and the drink. I distinctly remember one conversation, uh, like at midnight when he was in his college dorm or something, where he's a little shit faced and he's like, "I'm hungry," so he decides to order a pizza, and then he flipped out for like 20 minutes, almost crying, because uh, he didn't have any money in his account and he had to call, he had to call like Domino's and tell him he was too poor to order. Like, please don't send the pizza to me. I'm too poor. I can't afford the pizza. And they were they were mad because he said he'd pay cash when they got there, but he's a little he's a little high. He wasn't really paying attention. That's our troll lord, god of the ops, Aberman, having a meltdown because he couldn't afford his pizza. However, I firmly believe that no pity should be spared on my behalf. The true victims of Medicare were the targets of our harassment and those who associated with them, many of whom became targets themselves. The system we developed for distributing and destroying our victims' very lives was pure evil, as were those of us who participated in the process. There are no excuses for what I did, and no means of justifying our actions at the time. We did nothing to accelerate any sort of learning process for our victims who demonstrated immaturity or naivete and taught no lessons to those who battled on their own or battled with their own immorality. It's impossible to track exactly how many victims of Medicare there were, or even who or or even who many of them were. When I took measures to ensure that no archive or record of the site existed, the names and details of our victims disappeared with it. Personally, thanks in part to my painkiller-induced altered state of mind and also to my generally poor memory, I can't recall many of the details of Medicare's history. Attempting to recall even a general timeline of events comes difficult for me, and several of those who may still remember the finer details are likely unwilling to cooperate uh, in an effort to make amends. And so it's with great frustration with myself that I must admit I have little else to offer than my sincerest, deepest regrets to those affected by Medicare. The consequences I face for my actions do little to compensate for the damages I've caused. And I live with the knowledge that I may never fully atone for my actions during Medicare's run. Not a day goes by where I don't think about the things I did and allow my thoughts to turn to self-hatred and loathing. And, and that's pretty much it. I mean, there's a little bit more here. Blah, blah, blah. What a terrible person I am. So sorry about that. Please watch the dinner dates my new Let's Playing channel. Oh, you know, I'd like to take a second here also to just point out again, the moment he decided to set up a Let's Play, once you get into speedrunning, look at what happened to Chibi. Here's uh, here's Haberman. Suddenly, uh, just fucking 
demolished by Trolls Remorse. Talking about being LGBTQ, barbecue, and all that shit. All the horrible things he did, which were really, let's be honest, the only horrible thing that really ever happened on that website was probably what happened to Wolfie, and that was LMTE. <laughs> Haberman, Haberman's idea of targeted harassment and horrible things was really just laughing at fucking idiots on a YouTube video. But he sure likes to write about how bad it was. And H-Bomb was there. He was there the entire time. He was a contributor to uh, DeviantArt Coalition for Quality Control, or DQCC, uh, or Q, whatever the fuck it was, which was an attempt to just fuck with people, uh, tartlets, on their terrible, awful, shitty fucking DeviantArt accounts. Uh, in fact, let me let me show you some of the reactions. I've covered this too previously, but I'll, I'll show a little bit for it, the folks tuning in. Here's a, a DeviantArt account called Medicare Must Die. <laughs> it's from 13 fucking years ago. I am a DeviantArt user dedicated to the destruction of the troll group known as Medicare. Their website, Medicare.org, is used to launch attacks on DeviantArt users, YouTubers, and other groups of people on the internet. One page in, ta or in particular, called the DeviantArt Coalition for Quality Control, is used specifically to target DeviantArt users and has scared dozens of artists off DA before they could even reach their full potential just because of the characters they like or because of the friends they have. To the members of Medicare, I know you will read this. Your days of ruining others' lives are over. I'm coming for you. I know the tactics you use, and I will use them against you. Personal quote, overall pretty bad. Zero out of five stars. <laughs> oh. I believe this is the one that started the petition. There's a petition. There was a petition to get rid of. Let me pull this up. Uh, get Medicare off the internet. 308 signatures. Medicare got Nintendo Advocate and missed Nintendo Advocate off of YouTube, and I want Medicare to die. Sign the petition if you want. Medicare films for the Fusilarians and DJMTP off the fucking internet. Didn't really, didn't really go very far. Uh, Nintendo Advocate, by the way, was the guy that did the video about beans for Christmas and how much he hated his Mexican neighbors. <laughs> He's right up there with Matt Pat's photos, who was a guy that uh, had a foot fetish and a thing for fat ladies and would insert himself into game shows from, like, the 1970s. He made thousands of videos of him, like, he'd overlay himself, he'd use a green screen and put himself into game shows. Thousands of them. Insane amounts of them. I, I still don't fully fucking understand what was going on in his mind, but he was very dedicated to this. And so, uh, so th that's sort of the story of Haberman. And a little bit about H. Palmer. I, I bring this up because I know the Summerton thing is going around, and I'm sure Summerton's probably not dead. He probably is just being an attention whore. But on the off chance that he offed himself, it's a little spooky. It has some parallels to what Haberman was saying. I don't buy this Trolls Remorse shit. I think it's a, a overreaction, usually to hide the, you know, the shit that you've done in the past to try to sweep it under the rug. But H. Palmer, he knew about all this stuff going on. He was a part of a lot of it. He wrote and contributed to a good amount of it. So if it turns out Summerton's corpse washes up on the shores of some Canadian, you know, tributary, <laughs> well, let's just say that's Haberman's revenge. Oh, it's a bread tuber out there slaughtering people. Just like the song said, he hungers for new souls, Chad. He hungers, he desires new souls. It's terrible. <laughs> terrible, Chad. Do you know H-Bomber, when he started doing his, um, his YouTube channel, created a uh, add-on, I think it was for Firefox, an add-on to get rid of um, uh, toxic YouTube channels. And I was one of the first names that got put on that stupid fucking block list. This dude's out there making block lists, wiping out history. Amazing. It's amazing, chat. Strange how you run into people that are doing things. Doing things and you remember what they were like as they try to cover it up and pretend they weren't like that. I, I've noticed that a lot of these uh, bread tubers or lefties, uh, you know, the moral upright people that are out there writing four hour videos about uh, plagiarism seem to have uh, dark pasts when they did a lot of heinous shit. Now, Jimmy Boy here, I'm not an innocent little angel. I've done some fucked up shit. I'm a terrible person. Laughed at people, laughed at furries, made jokes about people putting bike pumps up their ass. <laughs> no, nothing on the level of Wolfie. I mean, that was that was straight up cruel. I did laugh. I have to admit, I laughed. It was. It was so cruel. It was so, it's just like, sometimes you come across something that's just so fucking mean, you, you just, you can't do anything but laugh. I mean, what, how the fuck do you react to that? So I don't think I'm on the level of Wolfie, but I'm not an innocent angel baby. But it's strange to me that the people that try to portray themselves as that generally aren't. Usually they've got some really fucked up shit in the closet. 
Now, how, how deep that goes, I couldn't tell you. It's not like H. Bomber was out there demanding people be beheaded. But he sure was familiar with what was going on. And you know, had that goon mindset of, let's fuck with everybody on the internet. Sort of like, uh, I don't know, let's, let's take another example of a, a bread tuber or a left-leaning personality that's popular at the moment. Uh, how about Vosh? Vosh. How about him? I mean, how many screen caps and Discord logs and things need to leak about this guy and his affinity for horse fucking? And not just horse fucking, but young girls. Now, I've heard his defense. I've seen it put forth by his, uh, uh, by his fan base and himself. That he's got something, some kind of a fetish for, what was it, the goblin defense or some shit? No, officer, I didn't know that was a seven-year-old. I thought that was a 10,000-year-old witch. A goblin that lost her tits in a magic duel. So what do we got? We got, I, even if you go back a couple of years, there, there are Discord caps of Vouch uh, that got leaked where he talks about wanting a girl who was retarded. She was a little slow in the mind, a little mentally disabled. Or he wanted a retarded girl to whack a horse off for him. <laughs> he wanted her to jack a horse off. And then what do you get? You get him on stream again, and suddenly, uh-oh, suddenly you got a giant fucking folder of uh, lolly anime girls drinking fucking buckets of horse cum. And that's a little hard to just kind of, you know, wave away and say, oh, no, it's, it's a little goblin. It's a little goblin girl. It's a, it's a little goblin girl drinking horse semen. <laughs> what the fuck? Bro, come on. Let's be real here. It's extra funny, too, because from my understanding, is literally before this happened, within the like a week of before this happened, he was going on this diatribe about how Pippa Pipkin and VTubers were a bunch of fucking Nazis, and how because they liked anime, they were probably pedophiles. And then what happens? He's on stream, and he's got little girls drinking buckets of cum. Oh, that's got to sting a little bit. Drinking rivers of horse semen. But he's one of those people that would portray himself as morally upright. We need to have an argument about the argument and then cite our facts and talk about the facts that we've cited because we don't want to plagiarize anything. We need to be morally and logically consistent. <gasps> Here comes my facts, and I'm going to read this white paper to you that I read off of Wikipedia, but you need to listen to me because I'm so incredibly intelligent, but I'm going to tell you about the morality of these things. <gasps> By the way, I like to masturbate to little girls drinking horse semen. Kind of makes that feel a bit disingenuous. Tiny bit disingenuous. I don't know, chat. Tiny bit? A little bit? Maybe? Hmm? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what to tell you, folks. The man likes horses and little girls. And I'm not saying, uh, H, don't get this wrong. I'm not saying H. Bomber guy likes little girls and horses. Uh, he clearly likes to see the blood of the innocent run across the land. That's what he enjoys. No, Vosh is the one that likes little girls and horses. I'm just saying there's a parallel there with this moral uh, bullshit that's put forward, and then it turns out just to be, I don't know, grift? Fake? Not real. Not true. It's not true. Chat. Hmm. Yeah, bread tubes had a real, it's been a real tough week. The other thing, too, I find a little bit funny in regards to H-Bomber guys. I, I see this argument a lot coming from uh, this particular area of, let's say, YouTube. That uh, content creators are responsible for the actions of the people that watch them. Or content creators are responsible for... Um, the results of those actions. So here you've got Summerton who's just getting his shit wrecked because uh, he's been called out for the dumb shit that he's doing in this video, right? Uh, and then you've got a lot of fans that are uh, uh, of H Bomber that are piling onto him. I think there's even a Reddit post. I swear to God, I wish I, I should have capped this, where they were talking about how unfair it was to H Bomb that this guy might have killed himself. Think how emotionally uh, damaging that is to H Bomb. My God, poor H Bomb, poor Harry. Poor Harry might be upset that this guy killed himself. What a piece of shit this guy is. <laughs> it's just insanity. But that argument gets put forward. Oh, no, you're, you're responsible for what your fans do. I mean, if that's the argument you're going to make, and these guys, you know, your fans went and harassed him, then I guess you look like an asshole, huh? I don't take that approach, by the way. I just find it funny they do, and now suddenly they're not, you know, they're not really they're not really touting that, are they? But, yeah, no, it's been it's been a tough month for bread tubers got the Summerton thing, making the rounds. People have jokes at that. You've got the Vosh thing. I think everybody saw what happened with Keffels and Tipster. Keffels going out there trying to defend it and act like it was normal, made themselves look like an asshole, and got uh, just their shit pushed in by Ethan Klein, of all people, 
And then Tipster, in between trying to date every woman that he comes across on social media, uh, had to retract his positions on this as well. So she's not, not, not doing well. Not going well. Terrible. <laughs> oh my god, we're, we're two hours in and I haven't even touched on... I haven't even touched on Gamergate 2 Electric Boogaloo. Because I was so interested in talking about... <laughs> about just Medicare. Should I just... Oh, nope, not that. Didn't want to go to that. Oh, that scared me a little. Dinged a little bit loud. No, no, I wanted to click that. That's what I wanted to click. Didn't even get to go over that yet. So we are going to go over that. Let me just clean up a few things here. Just get rid of some stuff we don't need to see anymore. Oh, boy. And then we could talk about Gamergate. Oh, my God, chat. It's the thing you've always wanted to talk about. Who doesn't fucking love Gamergate? Oh, let's get up. Get up and wiggle wiggle for me, chat. It's Gamergate. Oh, God. The thing that won't ever die. Please, Jim, talk about... I don't know why, but please talk about Gamergate. So we'll take one more break. I'm going to get another drink. Oh, I promise I'm not going to drown myself. <laughs> to avoid talking about this. I'll go get another drink. We'll take another small break. I'll come back. I'll read some... Uh, uh, would you call them super chats? Whatever. Whatever they are. Can we hit the goal? Oh, God, I should have done that. All. I should have done that. Can we hit the goal? I should have had a goal on screen and said, can we hit it? And then kept flashing cash up and Ko-Fi. So fucking stupid. I didn't do it. Got lazy. Anyway, uh, I'll play I'll play a little music here. Grab another drink. We'll come back and we'll talk about the reemergence. It's nearly 10 years to the date, which is fucking surreal. I mean, it's 2024. Game Brigade was 2014. And the only thing that's off is the month. You know, if it was August, it'd be even spookier. We'll talk about that. We'll talk about Sweet Baby Inc. We'll talk about uh, all the people that are running around with their heads cut off like, or with... Uh, like their chickens with their heads cut off, all that shit. You know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna play. Oh, fuck, what song? You know what? I'm. Uh, oh god, do I want the H bomb style? Hey, uh, no. You know what? I'm gonna play the merch song because I'm a little shilling whore. So I'm gonna play the merch song. We'll be back. Uh, quick break, and then uh, we'll continue on with 